Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. <clears throat> we'll have to update this pretty soon. Uh, and then in the latest version of Bookmap that will be coming out in mid-January, we'll also be offering cryptocurrencies. Uh, and uh, it's a, a great data feed uh, through crypto. Okay, it's, uh, it's going to be through the GDAX, uh, which offers uh, some real nice advantages uh, compared to, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so I see the excitement here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, the, um, the, the big distinction, uh, you know, between CME and uh, CBOE uh, and uh, what we're offering uh, is um, – uh, the connection with GDAX, so you'll really be able to scale your positioning. Uh, for for example, that's uh, that's one uh, advantage. Uh, kind of like a forex, how you can have micro and mini contracts uh, instead of take a you know one large futures contract that uh, is highly leveraged. Um, instead, uh, you can uh, really break that up into uh, much smaller contract sizes. All right, uh, there's there'll be a lot of other advantages. Nonetheless, let's continue on here. Um, so, uh, for those of you who are new, uh, welcome to the uh, the webinars. Um, the uh, this webinar, we're going to go through the the platform details uh, and a bit of the order flow. But uh, we won't get into uh, so much detail in the order flow. Uh, that is reserved for the next webinar that starts in about uh, 25 minutes. All right, and that's for those that are in trial or current customers. Uh, we separate the two out. And the reason being uh, is those that are current customers uh, already know the basics uh, and the details in the platform. Uh, they want to know about how to read it in the live market. Uh, and that is an excellent educational resource as well. That comes along with that 14-day free trial. Okay, uh, So you get the uh, – there's an educational course, and then during the live uh, advanced order flow webinars – uh, it will support the educational course, uh, and there's uh, other resources as well. Okay, so let's go to bookmap.com and just quickly go through it. Okay, we just scroll down through um, bookmap.com. The intro video here is a couple minutes long just to get you familiar with it. Um, just a section here about bookmap, uh, benefits, uh, the platform, etc. cetera. Uh, there's bookmap for equities. Uh, that's a, a new feature from, well, several months now, but um, uh, through NASDAQ Total View. Uh, and then uh, connectivity. So we are a software trading platform. Okay, uh, You will need a data provider. We don't provide the data. Okay, So uh, just like any other uh, futures uh, trading platform like NinjaTrader or like TTX Trader Pro or Interactive Brokers, <clears throat> These are platforms, and you need to connect your data uh, to that platform. You'll do the same in Bookmap. Now, these these three here are kind of interesting because uh, we actually connect through the API of these platforms as well. So it's kind of a mixture, uh, but uh, uh, that's great because uh, if you use a primarily Ninja or primarily TTX Trader Pro, you can also go through uh, through them as well. All right, else you just uh, input your credentials for CQG or Rhythmic or Gain or IQ, IQ feed or Transact or DX feed here, Dev Experts for, um, for NASDAQ. All right, um, pricing. Let's go through this. This is the, for that 14 day free trial uh, 49 per month and 99 per month. Okay, they are billed quarterly. Uh, and uh, uh, these, um, there's different features uh, between the Bookmap Basic and Advanced. Okay, and the features are the one-click trading, being able to trade right from the chart, uh, and then these proprietary indicators that we put together. Uh, for example, the large lot tracker, it um, uh, identifies larger players in the market uh, in the limit order book. Okay, we, all have, we, we have some uh, volume and book and balance indicators. We have an iceberg detector, so uh, we can discover when uh, a larger player is using hidden orders uh, to absorb, but still not showing uh, his orders in the order book. And there's also a correlation tracker. Okay. 
<clears throat> you know, if you're um, new to futures as well, uh, you can also click here for a free data feed a trial. Um, and um, uh, so you can uh, do a free trial of Bookmap for 14 days as well as data feed. Uh, and if you still can't decide uh, which which plan is right for you, you can uh, click here to see all of the features. Quants, you'll have specific needs. Um, you'll need to reach out to us uh, for connecting your data directly, uh, or your proprietary indicators, etc. Okay. All right. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, get the most up-to-date information uh, at Bookmap underscore Pro. Uh, our YouTube channel as well. You can subscribe to, and um, the uh, there's uh, some playlists here that we have just on the front uh, home page here. Okay, the bookmap intro videos, features and components, uh, just to understand what you're looking at in bookmap and how to use it in the user interface, uh, and then these order flow video snippets that go through the phenomena that we go through in detail in the markets um, in the advanced uh, webinars. Okay, so this is where uh, the rubber starts to meet the road. You start to understand these markets and you start to understand what bookmap is visualizing uh, and then take advantage of that. Okay, so let's jump into bookmap uh, and um, take a look at the visualization here. Okay, what are we visualizing? Okay, this is gold. Let's go back. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. We've been covering the NASDAQ for, for quite a while now. It's been moving a lot better than the S&P. Um, so uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll just do that. I mean, you can see the <laughs> real nice move here to the upside. Uh, and um, uh, let's uh, let's cover what what are we looking at here in Bookmap? Okay, uh, this looks rather complex. And if uh, you've been trading for a while, you've probably never seen data displayed this way. Okay, so what is it? Uh, what are we showing here? Uh, it looks uh, like a, a lot of uh, high-tech information. It's actually not. It's a very, very simplified view of the market, to be honest. Uh, we have an indicator sub-panel here. It's for the CVD, uh, cumulative volume delta. I'm going to close that up and just simplify this. Okay. We're only showing three elements here on the book map chart. Okay. It's historical best bid and offer, uh, the volume dots here, show where the volume traded on the historical best bid and offer. And then you see this uh, grayscale heat map here, okay? This is the recording of the dome, okay? You see these numbers here in the in the dome, the depth of market? Well, we re-record re that data and we project it onto the chart. So when you saw there was maybe high liquidity, like here at 63.13 right now, okay? You can see them jump in here. Then they just pulled. And he actually, it was the same player here, pulled and, and added higher and higher yet again. Okay. So we just saw there, we just saw a, a larger player and his activity here. Okay. And he pulled yet again. He's up here now at 316. Um, okay. That would be rather difficult to track here in a dome. Okay. Look, look at him jump all over the place here. Uh, and, um, trying to position himself here. Uh, but um, that would be uh, rather difficult to first off understand um, the, uh, that in, the, in, the, in a dome uh, and, um, uh, and then to understand that it, it's, it's this one player that's, uh, that was doing that here. Okay, now you can see more players are getting interested as price is coming up. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, let's get into the details here uh, of what Bookmap is displaying, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain each one of, um, of these, and we're going to just start with a very simplified uh, candlestick chart, okay, and just show that, okay, and let's zoom out a little bit, okay, so here's, where, here's our five-minute candlestick chart, and um, uh, we all know what this is, open, high, low, close of a five-minute period, okay? And this is the view that we're, we're accustomed to for, for uh, quite a while. If, you, if you've been trading uh, something like this or maybe a bar chart, um, and um, usually have some sort of indicators, et cetera, uh, trying to gain some sort of advantage. Problem is the indicators are based on a derivative of time, price, and volume, uh, and uh, they don't really give uh, understanding of truly what's going on in the marketplace, okay? Where do the actual volume trade? That's important, we wanna know that. That is lacking on this chart, okay? We have a volume subchart down here, 
but we don't know where on this five minute candlestick chart uh, the volume took place. We don't know how much uh, at that area, and uh, we don't know the type either, aggressive buyers or sellers. Okay? And that gives us tremendous insight uh, to uh, uh, understanding uh, and anticipating price movement. All right, and uh, uh, the problem here, the number one problem, okay, the volume is one. Uh, the number one problem, though, is the aggregation uh, in a candlestick chart. Uh, it just will aggregate uh, back and forth within that five-minute period, and then uh, uh, and then a, the, the candle will paint, and, it, and then that's that. Okay. There's all sorts of price action that happens between each of these candles, and uh, there's microstructures uh, that are broken that have a lot of volume that trade on them. Uh, we want to understand that data. It, it gives us insight to the possibility of future price movement. Okay, just the microstructure alone uh, is uh, is going to give us an advantage, and we can see that by accessing historical best bid and offer. Okay, so for example, uh, over here, uh, this small example. Well, here's what really occurred on this five-minute candle. This this candle here. Okay, uh, we um, we went down. Uh, a bit down below this range, uh, we came back up and we actually broke above this little microstructure right here. Okay, let me draw this in so you so you can see it a little clearer. Okay, right here, and then you can see that uh, we went up and we tested new highs for this range, uh, and it it did not accept above it. It came back down, but where did it come back down to? To the this uh, this uh, orange line that I just painted in here or or placed in here. Okay, that's because uh, it, it is accepting, it's not accepting above this high, but it is accepting above this structural little area right here. All right. Okay, so uh, that gives us insight here just with the microstructure. So this is bullish uh, at the moment. All right. And um, uh, anyway, uh, we can uh, understand the microstructure, but now we want to understand another part of this, uh, and that's the volume. Okay, where did the volume trade? And we're going to turn on the volume dots. Okay, so this solves that issue uh, with the volume dots uh, of understanding exactly where the volume traded. Okay, so look at this. Look at down here. This is pretty interesting price ac action um, and uh, and volume. Uh, we see uh, quite a bit of volume uh, down at this at this area here. Uh, but um, uh, we uh, actually, you, you can see them uh, uh, lift the offer here with not a lot of volume, okay, back up into this area here to these swings uh, of this high, okay. But the cluster of activity was actually down here. So on these wicks, on these candlestick wicks, now we, we, we know where that volume traded. In fact, we can see a little double bottom here. Okay, and then uh, we, we can see who, who won the battle uh, on this, and it was the, uh, the aggressor on the buy side. Okay, and they're still winning the battle at the moment. Okay, because you can see them up in this area here too. Uh, we were just covering this this little structural high up here. Okay, and we see more aggressive buying up in these areas. Okay, so um, so we remain, we remain bullish just based on the volume here uh, for the moment. All right, now let's zoom into this area here uh, and uh, and take a look. Uh, uh, really what occurred. So you understand what's, uh, what bookmap is really um, uh, displaying here, okay? So if I zoom in, uh, it, and let's get rid of this line at this point, okay. Uh, this is what the historical best bid and offer looks like, okay? Best offer is the uh, red line, uh, best bid is the green line, okay? And you can see these uh, green dots that take place on the red line and red dots that take place on the green line. Okay, these are uh, uh, these are our trades, or uh, it's trading activity here. Okay, it's volume that that traded on that uh, historical best offer. Right, it's the transactions. So um, now we can see exactly where the volume is trading, and um, uh, we have a. Uh, uh, an understanding of exactly how much too. I mean, we can use the data tip tool here, and we can see that uh, the date, the time, uh, what was on the uh, 
or the spread here, uh, as well as the volume that traded here. Okay, so this was for a volume of three. And note how, look look how the, the volume displayed here, it shows uh, 6308.83333. That's because we're, there's more trades than just uh, one that took place here. There's more trade events. Because we're giving you the overall VWAP of these three. So if I zoom in, I can continue to zoom in here. Okay, and this is what really occurred here. Okay, one, two, three. There were three trade events. Okay, there's a little bit of latency here between the best offer and uh, and the traded volume. The, the best offer did not make it up here and then uh, and then come back down. Okay, so um, uh, that occurs. Uh, you'll see it a lot. Um, well, when you start to really zoom in, I mean, we're looking at millions of seconds now. Okay, down at this level, uh, the micro microsecond level. We can continue to zoom in and look at nanosecond level. Okay. Uh, and look at billions of seconds. Uh, but that doesn't uh, necessarily help us because we're not going to, we're not going to access that. So that's why as you note how, as I zoom out, I compress that timeline and we give you the overall shape of that volume with just a, a bigger dot. Okay. So as I zoom out in book map, uh, you can start to see these areas where there's uh uh, a lot more trading based on the size of the dot. Okay, well you can use that data tip tool and hover over here and it tells you here's a volume of 357 contracts. This one up here uh, was 282. And the majority of it up here was obviously selling. Okay, why is this in a pie display? Uh, it's in that pie display here because as I zoom in, note how I'll pull apart all those trades and this is what occurred. Okay, here's, here's a good, good example of the latency. Uh, between traded volume uh, and best bid and offer. All right, so um, it, you can't have volume that trades, you know, outside of the uh, the best offer, right? So they come in via, uh, uh, it, well, into uh, my computer uh, or anyone's uh, machine uh, via two different um, protocol, okay? TCP IP and FIX and, uh, and UDP. Okay, so uh, because of that, those different protocols, we, we can get a little bit of uh, a lag. Anyway, uh, there was a lot of trading activity here. Okay, we see a, this is a sweep of the book. This is something that we cover in the educational course. And this is important to understand because it's usually how we move to new price levels. Okay, not always. Uh, it could be a stop hunt or stop run. Uh, but... Um, uh, look at, there's nothing but buying here, nothing but, okay? So either someone hit the market buy button for a tremendous amount and move price against them, uh, or it's just stops being hit, uh, you know, people getting out of the market, okay? Uh, anyway, as you as I zoom back out, note how uh, we're displaying this overall volume at the top here. There's both buying and selling up here, but it's just aggregated visually for us, uh, so we understand uh, really what occurred here, okay, with all of this volume. All right, so that's the volume, uh, and um, uh, that gives us a lot of insight. Okay, it's uh, like a, a footprint chart that, uh, you know, gives us uh, the insight to where the volume traded uh, exactly. The problem with the footprint chart, though, is it aggregates the volume just like the candlestick does. Right. And um, uh, so it, it disguises the microstructure. Uh, and that's where Bookmap has an advantage because we can see the microstructure. All right. We can see these little structures break and we can understand the volume that trades down below these areas just like right now. Okay. Note that the breakdown here. Okay. And, uh, and, and note that it's, it's all the selling that's taking place here, driving the market lower. We're down below this structural area here. You don't see that in the five minute candlestick chart. Okay. You, you, you just, you, you don't get that structure. Right. So, um, uh, anyway, uh, let's take the candlestick chart off. Uh, and, uh, let's just look at the microstructure and volume. And, uh, let's also look here at the, um, uh, the next element on the book map chart. And that's the heat map. Okay. So what the heat map shows, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a visual uh, uh, visualization of the historical 
and current limit order book. Okay, so here's our dome. Uh, here's our price ladder, and here's our depth of market. Depth of market on the offer, depth on the bid, and best bid and offer right here. This window is showing the same thing, uh, but you'll see the heat map here in just a minute. Okay, so what the heat map does uh, in this window here is we take these numeric values in the uh, depth of market uh, and we'll paint them uh, bright for high liquidity. Okay, and it'll be a little darker if it's less liquidity. So just visually, very quickly, we can understand uh, where the high liquidity is in the in the order book, and we can see their behavior. So when these numbers or when this when this heat map changes, it's because the the liquidity has changed. This is the current state of the market here. Okay, but we take all of this data here and then we transpose it on the chart historically. So now we can see the evolution of the people here on the offer. Okay, at this at this uh, 63, 12 and a half. Note the striations here. What this is showing uh, is I can hover over these areas. You see, it you get the date, the time, and then on the ask we have 26 contracts. Well, as I hover over these other areas, it just bumped up from 26 to 48. Okay, it's brighter in here as well, uh, or here it gets very bright, and this is 51. Okay, uh, 53 contracts. Okay, so now we can start to understand uh, these these players uh, and uh, how they're positioning, uh, where they want to uh, deal in the book. Okay, and their intent uh, to trade at these areas. Now we just traded right through that area right now. Okay. Well, let's let's get an understanding. We're going to zoom into this this level here. Did this volume, or I'm sorry, did this liquidity trade? Okay. And here's our answer. Okay. No, it didn't. Okay. So now at this point here, we actually had 59 contracts here. Okay. Pretty high liquidity for the Nasdaq. And uh, this this uh, or these players here pulled their liquidity at the last moment that price came up. So we, we understand that this is fake liquidity. They did not have the intent to trade here, okay? We can make that distinction in book map. So we can understand and utilize this dome data uh, to our advantage. We can understand if they really mean to trade or not, okay? And in this case, they did not. In fact, uh, this is something we, uh, we see quite often uh, this is called a flip of the book, okay? This is actually a pretty good example um, because the flip of the book, and this, this is actually a disruptive practice, uh, and it is, uh, uh, it is uh, illegal. Uh, it needs to be proven, uh, but uh, this has all the elements of one that um, is suspect, okay? They pulled high liquidity here with, without intent to trade, Okay, they're adding up higher into higher areas, but then look how they took their liquidity and flipped to the other side here. Okay, it looks like uh, their their intent here is actually to uh, lure uh, buyers up into this area here, uh, pull the liquidity, add up into higher areas, spoof on the other side here to try to get more orders filled at a higher area on the sell side. Okay, now, and let's zoom into this area. So now here's where we see liquidity. They stayed in the book, okay? Here, this, this volume dot is uh, for volume of 30, and they stayed here with high liquidity. There's 54 contracts here, and they stayed there. So we just made a distinction between fake liquidity and real liquidity. And we're also starting to note the behavior here that just, just took place. Okay, and all of this is we're we're putting all these pieces together and understanding the order flow just based on these three elements: historical best bid and offer, volume, and the uh, uh, historical view of the uh, limit order book. All right, and we're, we we just saw some pretty interesting stuff here. Okay, you're able to use that to your advantage. Okay, and that's why we have the uh, advanced live order flow uh, webinars, so we can start to piece this together uh, and uh, and look for uh, an advantage. Okay.
All right. So uh, here was our flip of the book. Uh, and now that there it's it's you know we were coming right down into that area here okay here's a little stop hunt into that area down below it and uh, and we see that uh, it was not sustained we're right back up into this range above this level here this is a key level uh, for this price for this time frame okay this 63 12 and a half anyway all of this here we're able to discern uh, in book map and uh, uh, look to uh, add this into our trading strategies okay it's just a very visual uh, way of understanding um, uh, the market uh, and uh, and it doesn't hide anything from you uh, we can we can see uh, the liquidity and the intent to trade at these areas or not all right so anyway uh, that's uh, that's what you're looking at in book map uh, and then uh, uh, there's all sorts of um, uh, different setups to start to understand uh, and look for uh, advantages. Uh, we, uh, we have our educational course that goes through a lot of that. We, we start with very simple things uh, in that course, like understanding a sweep of the order book here. Okay, We need to understand that. Uh, this is a phenomenon that has broken out. Price has broken out into a new range. Okay. And then we understand it in context to, and that's, that's an important word, the context. We understand this breakout here in context to the order book and also the volume here. Because look where we came back to and tested right here. Okay, right to where we broke out from. Okay, and actually they pulled here. Okay, and then they, they got, they jumped back in. Uh, and then uh, we, we, we broke down below, but came right back up in here. And there's some pretty nasty stuff going on here. Uh, but then uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we still remain bullish here. And those, those traders providing liquidity at 63.12 are back and a half and three quarters are back in the market. All right, guys, uh, let's uh, wrap it up. And uh, for those of you in trial, we will uh, see you in the next webinar. Okay, thanks.